So this is my latest toy. I uh, just picked this up off of eBay. It's a Hewlett Packard 3312A arbitrary waveform generator. Uh, it's good up to 15 megahertz. Um, it acts like a, a normal generator. Um, you know, sine wave, square wave, that, that kind of thing. It also has a sweep capability that I was interested in. And it also has an arbitrary function, so you can have arbitrary waveforms. And uh, I'll, I'll give a demonstration of that. So uh, let's just come up here. I've got a Rigel hooked up. They both have fans, so it's going to be a little noisy in the audio today. But um, So you can change the... Uh, change the frequency. It's got a, a, an encoder knob. Uh, you can also type in the number. Uh, it's got lots of digits. Uh, it'll do square waves, uh, triangle waves, uh, sawtooth. It also has the ability to do modulation. Uh, we can turn on and you can see that we're modulating the signal here. And we can change the modulation depth. Changing the level, that's 100% modulation, 50% modulation. You can even overmodulate 120%, that's kind of cool. Uh, we can turn that off. Uh, we can do FM modulation. We can do FSK, that's kind of cool. That's be good to look at. FSK is where you have uh, um, two different frequencies. Uh, one frequency, let's say, uh, represents a zero, and the other frequency represents a one. And so you can send these bursts. So this is how the original uh, cassette tape interface worked. It encoded the, uh, encoded the signal into, into two different tones. I think they were 1200 hertz and uh, uh, 2400 hertz, one being a zero, one being a one, uh, the Tarbell interface. Um, Anyway, uh, you can see here that we have bursts of high frequency and low frequency. Uh, so that's kind of fun. Uh, we can do um, we can do noise. Uh, noise is noise is really cool. No matter what <laughs> no matter what speed you you go at, you get noise. It's always in there. And then the arbitrary uh, functions. Uh, we can do a sync pulse. Uh, so, let's see if I can trigger on this correctly. Uh, I'm doing. I'm still doing FSK. Uh, I need to turn off FSK. There we go. So we're uh, generating these these nice sync pulses. Um, and then you can do really strange things. Uh, it has several. Um, arbitrary waveforms programmed in. You can program in your own uh, arbitrary waveforms. Uh, I think it's got places for four different uh, user waveforms uh, up to 16,000 uh, bytes long and each byte is 12 bits. So it's a 12-bit A to D. Uh, the arbitrary list. The other, the other favorite of mine is Cardiac. Oops, I pushed the wrong button. I pushed the wrong button. Uh, sync. Cardiac, that button there. There we go. And it gives, uh, gives actual heart waveforms. Uh, that's kind of cool. I think they were just showing off saying that, hey, you can put in any, any arbitrary waveform you want. So I think it's going to be real useful. I like the instrument. It looks brand new. I mean, it's, it's really, really, really pristine. It's a very nice, very nice instrument. So here we have the um, uh, sync uh, signal coming into channel 3, and I'm triggering on channel 3. So I have a nice stable display. So I have a start, uh, start of sweep um, synchronized. And here you can see uh, different sweeps. I'm going to have it so that just one sweep is, fills up the screen. So we go from 1 hertz to a megahertz in logarithmic. So we have 1 hertz, 10 hertz, 100 hertz, 1,000 hertz, 10,000 hertz, 
100,000 hertz, one megahertz. So every two division is a decade. Um, and so we can see here that we have a, uh, an envelope. Um, so what we're looking at is a, a, a low pass filter. Uh, let's just take a look at the output of the generator. So the output of the generator is uh, constant in amplitude um, from one hertz to a megahertz, um, approximately. A little bit of variation in there. Um, so if we want to uh, look at something like this RC circuit, this is just a resistor and capacitor to the ground, so it's just a, uh, a low-pass filter. Um, we can kind of see the shape. If we want to see that a little bit better, uh, we can go into display and we can set our persistence of our display to infinite. Um, so now it will, it will build up an image. We'll need to change the intensity of that up to something reasonable. Let's say uh, 70%, 70, 71%. So it gives us a nice a nice picture of the Bode plot of the low-pass filter. Um, if I take off our signal, it remembers it because it's, it's infinite persistence. Um, and if I uh, bypass the uh, filter and go to, uh, go to the output, we can see that we have a, uh, um, there's no roll-off here. This does seem a little bit of roll-off. It might be the scope probe. Uh, might be that I, uh, if th this would be better if I was terminated into 50, 50 ohms into the oscilloscope and don't use the scope probe and stuff, and uh, I'll, I'll play with that. But I just kind of wanted to give a demonstration of how, how this is. If we want to go back and take a look at our filter, uh, we hit the, the run stop button and it resets the, uh, the persistence. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. We here we can uh, we can sort of change. Um, we can change things. I'm gonna see if I can't insert a uh, more capacitance. Uh, that's not gonna be much there. How about this one? Yeah, there we go. So you can see here's the original, and then when I put on the extra capacitance, I'm paralleling the capacitor, uh, so you can see that it changes a bit here. Uh, we could do it the other way. We can uh, build up our persistence plot here, and then when we go take off the capacitor, boom, it builds up a new one. So It's a nice way to compare things. It's real time. It makes tuning easier. Uh, if you adjust things, you can see it real time. So it'll be a much better display. All right. Um, so now that I have my sweep generator, let's uh, let's let's sweep something. Um, I know the cables are in the way here. Uh, the uh, function generator is set up to sweep from one hertz to one megahertz uh, logarithmically. And the amplitude is set here. If you can see that, it's actually 100 millivolts, um, 100 millivolts peak to peak. And the thing that we're going to test is my audio buddy. Uh, remember um, that channel two is the original um, circuit. Channel one is the circuit that I've uh, hacked to be the INA217, uh, which I believe is much, much better. So what we're doing now is we're sweeping channel two. And this is what we get. And I have an awful shine from the door. All right, uh, here's a sweep of um, channel two, which is the original circuit. Uh, I don't remember the op amp type. It was a uh, JRC, but I don't remember the, the part number. But it's what was... Uh, uh, standard with the uh, audio buddy circuit. And you can see that uh, it does roll off in frequency. So in the center, this is one kilohertz, 10 kilohertz, 100 kilohertz. So right around 15 kilohertz, uh, it is rolling off. Um, and the base, the base is going up and down because it's AC coupled, so it kind of lifts it up. Um, 
and uh, there's not enough plus and minuses in in a quick enough succession to make it equal to zero. It kind of wiggles it up and down a bit. If you had a larger capacitor, it probably wouldn't do that. But anyway, um, I think you can see that it kind of gets a little bit larger if you just take a look at the excursion of these. Uh, there's a little bit more gain out in the base than there is up here in the triple, just a tiny bit, and it does roll off. So um, let's go ahead and try channel one. So I'm moving the generator over to channel one and the scope over to channel, channel one. And there we go. And I think you can see right away that the roll off is way higher in frequency and it also doesn't roll off like a normal curve. It stays very, very flat and rolls off sharply. So uh, this is the 100 kilohertz section. So this thing stays flat out to about 120 kilohertz before it, it rolls off and then it rolls off very quickly. Um, and I think you can see that it's straighter lines that it keeps its gain product uh, constant over over the entire range. It, there's not a base boost in this thing. Um, and let's see if we can't capture this as a reference signal. Um, so there I have the reference signal. And then let's move back to channel channel two. There we go. So you can see that we're getting all of this power here out in the high frequencies. And you might ask, well, why do I need that? I can't hear that. I can't hear 100 kilohertz. Um, it's the same argument that people make about why do I need 100 watts in my stereo amplifier if I'm only going to use 4 watts to drive my speaker. It has to do with transient response. You need instantaneous power every once in a while if somebody crashes a cymbal or hits a bass drum or something. You need a really a stiff amplifier to be able to reproduce those transients. And in the preamp, it's no different. Um, the, this high frequency component that's out here means that this thing can reproduce uh, faster transients and will be able to reproduce transients better, which means it'll have lower distortion. All right, so I took my time and uh, made a more careful measurement. I set the uh, sweep time to uh, 12 seconds. So it had time to DC uh, average and uh, make a good measurement. So. Uh, the span from 1 hertz to a megahertz took 12 seconds. And here's what it looks like for the original uh, audio buddy circuit, which uses a, uh, a uh, op amp in a, in a simple differential amplifier configuration. And you can see it's, uh, it's rolling off the bass. I thought the bass was boosted, but it turns out that the bass wasn't. Um, the bass actually drops off, um, and so it gets rid of some of the lower bass looks like it's starting to drop off just around 100 hertz and and it's rolled off uh, quite a bit and then the high end rolls off pretty quickly it seems like it's starting to roll off around 15 20k maybe 15k and uh, so that's what the uh, that's what the uh, plot looks like for the original circuit here's the plot for the INA uh, 217 and you can see it's much flatter, uh, much more well behaved. Uh, the base section goes much lower. The base section doesn't start roll off, start, doesn't start rolling off until maybe 20 hertz. Right? So it runs down much, much farther. Um, so uh, the base is running around 20 hertz. It's still operable around 10 hertz. Um, and then the high frequency response taste stays absolutely dead flat until 100k. Um, and uh, even runs pretty far above 100k. So that definitely will help with transit response.